Thank you for joining us for today's message. We believe we can go anywhere in the world from right here in Lamarck, Texas and reach people just like you. If you'd like more information about Abundant Life, please visit ALCC.org. You can also text the number below if you would like to support the church financially. Be ready for a powerful message that's gonna impact your life. I wanna talk to you just for a moment about staying connected to the power of God and how you have to press for the power of God. You have to press for that connection. You press for that connection. You press for that connection. You press for it. The Apostle Paul said, we press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. We press toward it. My experience has been that if the enemy can just cause you to disconnect from what God has called you to be connected to, that, it, that it, will, it will stop that flow of the power of God in your life. It's very important to hear this. Consistency and persistence is very, very important. That's not something that just your mama or grandmama or someone was supposed to teach you when you were young. No, that's a necessity in the kingdom of God. We are not, Hebrews 10 says, those who turn loose, let go, and look back. We are those who press toward the mark for the prize of the highest purpose of God in our life. Can I have an amen here? Amen. Very necessary that we do not just decide to kind of jog for Jesus in life, but we run the race. We run the race with patience, the Bible says, and with faith. And we will inherit promises. Hallelujah. Uh, a couple of years ago, our internet at the house got, uh, it just went off. It was just out. And, and Pastor Cindy is always working on the internet because she's superintendent of the school, greatest Christian school in the state of Texas, right here at Abundant Life, Abundant Life Christian School. Plug, plug, if your child's not in there, get them in there. It's a powerful school. Anyway, uh, it was a power, uh, th we thought we had a, a problem some way so I, hired, I had some people come out and look at it. Some internet people come out and look at it. And they couldn't find our problem. They're like, we'll just basically have to tear everything out and start all over again. It just gets you a whole new little router, a new everything. So I thought, well, that's not right. And uh, so I had someone else look at it. And we kept trying to get the internet to come back on, but it wasn't working for us. It wouldn't come on uh, at our house. So uh, Brother Scott here in the church uh, uh, Scott Pearson, I asked Scott, would he go out to the house and look at it? And uh, he goes out to look at, at our internet connection before I spend a bunch of money uh, on something else. And uh, he was there about 30 minutes or 20 minutes or so, something like that. And the internet came back on. Amen. And I said, well, that's, that's awesome. What happened? Uh, he said, well, you just had a connection that was off yeah. up in the attic up here. Yeah. You had a connection that somehow had gotten off and unloosed a little bit. So I just tightened that connection up and it came back on. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you know there's some areas in your life that if you're going to press and obtain what God has for you, you're going to have to stay connected. Amen. You have to stay connected and there are plenty of things that cause disconnection, but thank God for connection. You'll notice if you would please in Matthew chapter 15, are you there? If not, we're going to be here for a long time. <laughs> Verse 21, Jesus went and, and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Tyre and Sidon. Let's call that today Iraq. He would have been over close to where Iraq was, not far from that territory in that area. And he beheld a woman of Cana, uh, a woman of Cana came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Can I just say this real quick? When she called him son of David, that, that's like Bartimaeus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and healed that blind man because he could see what no one else could see. Amen. That he was not just a Jewish carpenter trying to be a priest, but he was the Messiah. Amen. Now here's a woman who calls him son of David also. And when she calls him son of David, it gets Jesus' attention, but his disciples don't understand it. Maybe they think that she's just repeating what she heard Barnabas say, 
or someone else. But the scripture says, because the Bible kind of goes around in this verse to tell us that she's from a, Jesus is in a, a faraway area, but this lady must have followed him from Canaan. And so she's after him. She's trying, she's pressing. She's probably going into some enemy territory potentially. That's not a real uh, a safe zone that she's walking in. She says, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Uh, one translation says tormented. But he answered her not a word. Jesus didn't answer her a word. You know, sometimes silence is an answer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He answered her not a word. You can be sure faith is talking to faith about this time. Uh, Jesus heard her say something. He called her son of, he called him son of David. That means she had a revelation that he was different from all the other healers of the day, all the other preachers of the day, all the other prophets of the day, or the whatever other teachers. She knew in her spirit so much that she journeyed into a dangerous area to try to find him uh, when, when other people are not even seeing or, or probably no one else is buying into her revelation that he's the uh, son of David. It doesn't make any difference. She's going to press. Somebody shout press. press. She's going to be consistent and persistent. Watch what happens here. He answered her, but not with a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Time out. She could care less about us. She wants him. Can I just remind you, you better not start reading your own press clippings. This isn't about you, it's about him. Hallelujah. Uh, I had this interesting experience, and I've had numerous experiences like this because I have prayed and ministered to so many people in these first 40 years of being a minister of the gospel, a public minister of the gospel. And because we're Holy Ghost people, we lay our hands on a lot of people and we prophesy to a lot of people. But I'd like to tell you, I'm just made out of dirt. But I know the one, come on, who knows how to walk on water. Are you listening to me today? The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God is real. You and I are vessels to be used by God. That's what this is all about. And the scripture says right here, uh, they begin to say, Jesus, she cries after us. But he answered and said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Oh my goodness, it's so powerful. I wish I had time to do all of this. It's like a whole series. But here's what I can tell you. She begins to step into another dispensational truth. Uh, Jesus will soon be revealed as the son of David. He will die and he will come back from the dead. And then he will return. And I'd like to tell you, and pour out the Holy Spirit. And then he's going to come back again still one day. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. But she begins to talk about something that's beyond that dispensation because she had a revelation. I like to say when your revelation gets bigger than your situation and you have that declaration, you're about to have a manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life. Uh, she began to work with what she had right there. The scripture says, He answered her and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. See, that's another move. Jesus first came to the Jew, the Bible says. But then he expanded that to the Gentile. Now listen, for three and a half years he revealed himself so they would understand what Abraham and what Moses and everyone had written about and what God had given them to reveal the Messiah when he came. He first uh, began to, uh, with his miracles, signs, and wonders, especially when he would do them, the timing of the miracles of God in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are stunning because almost every one of them happened around a feast day, uh, which was declaring the purpose of that feast day. And he was revealing that, but be that as it may, uh, here Jesus is working that, but if a person who was not Jewish necessarily had a revelation that he is the Messiah, or if they had a revelation from that next generation, 
that next dispensation when he would also be ministering to the Gentiles. And given that same uh, revelation where you and I Gentiles uh, by faith become, the Bible says, heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Amen. Come on, give me a hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, if someone had that revelation, it didn't make any difference when it was. Old Testament, New Testament. If they have a revelation of who the Messiah is, God is going to minister to that person. Amen. How many of you are glad God's no respecter of person? So the scripture says, once again, let me get my, he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep, the sheep of the house of Israel, sheep, the lost sheep. Woo, Lord, should I do that? Verse 25, then came she and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. Somebody shout worship. Listen, she would not be denied. First, she didn't get an answer, it looked like. Then she didn't get the answer that she wanted. But it didn't make any difference because she had connected herself. She had a revelation that Jesus is the answer to what she obviously could not have an answer for because this, uh, she, she had discerned that her daughter was being tormented by the devil. There are some things that medicine are not going to help. I'm preaching better than you're amen right now. There are some things that are just not natural that you may be having a battle with. But can I just tell you that your revelation in relation to Jesus Christ and what uh, he can do, who he is and what he'll do for you, that revelation will set you free from anything seen or not seen. There is a not seen world and there is a seen world. Are you listening to me? And your revelation of Jesus and your confession along with that, what you have believed in your heart and said with your mouth is what gives you access into that heavenly power source that sets you free, that Jesus appropriated for you and me and sets you free. But it's all relative to what you believe in your heart and what you say with your mouth. And then do you press for that? Do you press for that? Are you connected uh, to the plan of God in your life. Uh, if you are, get ready for your answer. Listen to this now. Then came she and worshiped him. Somebody shout worship. Can I just say that worship is probably one of the most powerful connections that you have in the spirit realm because God inhabits some things. When you begin to worship and praise him, God inhabits that. You say, well, I, I don't ever sense that God's actually work, uh, working with me and, and it's not happening when I'm worshiping. The Lord. Can, I, can I just say, check your worship. Check your worship. Check your prayer. Make sure you're praying according to the Word of God, which is called the will of God. 1 John 5 says, if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Listen, do you know what a will is? A will is something that has been given to you that it's not something you work for. It's something that's been granted you, something given to you. Several times in the, in the 42 years that Cindy and I have been married, we have inherited. People have left us in their will. Our family members have blessed us and left us with things over the years, which is a tremendous honor. It's a great blessing. We didn't work for it. We were just born into it. But other people were born into it also, and they maybe not were left in that particular will. How many of you are glad your name is in the will of Jesus Christ? Come on. That's what the Bible is. The Old and the New Testament is the same word for a will. If we ask anything according to His will, the Bible says. So we ask according to His, his deposit that He made for us and wrote our name. I like to say He wrote it in His own blood. In, 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 in his uh, book of life, and you and I are a part of the will of God. Look at two people and say, you and I look like cousins. Come on, tell them that right now. <laughs> Some of y'all didn't say that with conviction. <laughs> then came she and worshiped him. Somebody shout worship saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, it's not proper, it's not correct 
to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Oh, my goodness. Children and their pets. <laughs> you don't want to hear my story on pets. <laughs> we have two of them. Plus, we have a cat that lets us live in her house. Cindy and I have always had a cat. Since we got married, we always have a cat. For some reason, that's because we don't like rats or lizards in the house. And cats are awesome. Can I have a big hallelujah? And for the rest of you, who cares? All right, so here's the thing. We also have two little dogs. I, have a, I bought this little uh, puppy. She was supposed to be a miniature wire hair dachshund. So those things are kind of crossbred with Jack Russells, you know. Uh, so you get a miniature Jack, and you get a miniature Dachshund, and somehow or another they breed them together, and you're supposed to get this little miniature Dachshund, wire hair. And so this one was not supposed to get at the most 12 pounds, which she passed up about 18 pounds ago. <laughs> so she's now 30 pounds, about this big. And we, you know, we're good to feed her good and all, but it didn't make any difference because she just grew. Then we have another little dachshund that we keep now at, at, at the house, a little miniature one. And uh, she's almost blind. And so the other one has almost become her seeing eye dog. <laughs> and if Cindy and I are gone, or if someone hasn't been to our house in six hours, sometimes... Children and their pets happen. <laughs> and we have to clean up the mess. He answered and said, It's not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs, to their pets. And she said, Truth, Lord. Someone say, Truth, Lord. Truth, Lord. Listen, when God can talk to you in a dialogue that nobody but you and He understand, you have begun to mature you have a revelation of who he is and who you are in him. And she says to him, truth, Lord, truth. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. She just said, Lord, you can't offend me. You can't hurt me. You can't put me off. I'm connected. I don't care what you call me. I am connected. I'm not, you can forget it. I'm here. And because I'm here, I'm expecting something to happen. And she persisted based upon her revelation, not just on her need. Her need was what inspired her to go toward Jesus, but her revelation is what kept her pursuing him, staying connected to him, pressing toward him, refusing to back off regardless of what she heard. Sometimes we just hear it's going to rain, and if we're not careful, we, we don't even pray or we don't worship, or we don't go to church, or we don't whatever. And uh, sometimes we just have a little situation that comes up, and it puts us off. But when you have a revelation that your answer is in Christ, Amen. it's one thing to have an opinion. It's another thing to have a revelation. When you get that revelation that your answer comes in Christ, nothing nor anyone can keep you from pressing, come on church, from pressing towards your answer. You'll refuse to be distracted. Here men try to distract her, and then when she gets her answer, it's not the answer she wants. But she doesn't care. She just continues in intercession. She keeps pressing toward Jesus, the Bible says. He answered and said, uh, it's not the dispensation that I minister to the Gentiles yet. Uh, and I'm going to add a parenthesis in here because Jesus did this and showed it several times unless they have a revelation of who he is. And then it didn't make any difference. So the scripture says, she said, truth, Lord. Everybody shout, truth, Lord. Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as you will. And her daughter was made whole from that very Hour. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's a powerful thing. Jesus looked at her. I imagine the disciples who were standing there were feeling a little jaded at this point anyway because Jesus had overrode their objection. And he just starts talking to her. So apparently here's a woman by herself talking to Jesus in a crowd in a culture where that wasn't supposed to happen. 
But Jesus just starts doing it anyway. He goes through every uh, obstacle to have his ministry touch her revelation. Amen. And can I just say Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Amen. That he'll go through every obstacle if you'll just keep pressing toward him. You will have your answer. It may not happen instantly. It may not happen uh, the moment you thought you, you had to have it, but just get ready because God has an answer tied to your revelation. Amen. Do you have a connection tied to your revelation? That's very, very important. She saw him as the son of David, the Christ. Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great. Somebody shout great. Great, great is thy faith. Jesus only did that to two people. He did that to this woman here. And he did it also uh, to the centurion who had great faith. And the word great right there is an interesting word. Uh, with all of the faith actions that we see in the four Gospels, twice Jesus said someone had great faith. A centurion and a woman uh, from Cana who is pressing and pressing and pressing toward him. And she's connected because of her revelation that she has that he is the answer. Nothing can distract her. Nothing can keep her away. She's going anyway. Listen to it now. The word great is the Greek word mega, M-E-G-A. Everyone say, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Mega. mega. For instance, you and I had a mega storm one year ago this week. There was a mega flood. That's exactly what it means. It means big. It means uh, uh, upsized. It means not just a grain of mustard seed, but she's acting on this faith and it has grown in her so strong that it's become like the largest tree in her field. Uh, the Bible says, and she is pressing, it's mega faith. It's mega faith. Anyone ever been to, uh, where, do you ever go to McDonald's? I shouldn't talk about food, should I? You ever go to McDonald's and you drive up? And you say, okay, I'll take a little small Coke and I'll take uh, you know, fries and I'll take whatever you get there, a, a hamburger. Give me a Big Mac. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> when you're hungry, even Big Mac sounds good, doesn't it, huh? <laughs> and you drive up there and the first thing they say to you when they do that, they say, uh, would, you like, would you like to upsize that? Uh, one of them says, would you like to mega size it? You can go into, a, it's like a 7 and 11 and they used to have an ad there. You could get a mega cup. And it was like a slushy of some kind in a mega cup. And when they brought that cup out, it was like this big. And if you brought it back, they filled it up for 10 cents or something. And, and they, they just wanted this thing supersized. I'd like to tell you there are different levels of faith. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. There are different levels of faith. And when you see Jesus use that mega term, it means someone is connected. They refuse to be distracted. They're pressing, they're going all the way. And Jesus says they have mega faith. Great is thy faith. I'm sure that Peter, James, and John would have loved for Jesus to turn and say, you guys have mega faith, but he never said it one time to them. But he did say it to a little woman who refused to be denied. I wish somebody would get happy in here right now. She was pressing. She was pressing toward the mark the prize, the high calling in Christ Jesus. The word there is a powerful word also in the Greek. It means, it's the word S-C-O-P-O-S, skopos. And the word skopos means exactly what it means. It'd be like looking through a periscope or a telescope or a scope on a gun or something and, and, and just scoping in and zeroing in uh, toward that mark, that skopos. He, uh, pressing toward the mark, uh, zoning in exactly, refusing to be distracted. Pressing, dialed in to Jesus. The disciples say one thing. She's like, who cares? Jesus says one thing and it's not the answer. Who cares? She's just like Jesus, but you're the one who has the answer to what I need. You can't run me off. You can't disconnect me. You can't offend me. They can't offend me. I need my answer. Come on, somebody. Your faith is growing the day you're like that. And Jesus said, great, mega is your faith. Be it unto you even as you will. Write these things down and we're done this morning. Are y'all learning something today? Yes. Write these things down. I'm going to call this uh, seven areas to be connected. Seven ways to be connected. Here's the first one. You have to connect with persistence. If you're going to be 
connected to God, you have to be persistent. Don't forget the internet. If you disconnect, you lose the power. Amen. So we're people who pray. We're people who worship God. We're people who refuse to back off. We're people who press through all of the objections of this world. We just keep pressing in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. Here's the second thing. You have to stay connected, listen, with your own life and your lifestyle, your life. Listen, how many of you know your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Amen. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Years ago, the Spirit of God said this to me. He said, if you do not take care of your body, you will not fulfill the plan that I have for your life. Amen. You take care of your body. I don't know any way uh, that anyone has a perfect take care of body. Some people get way extreme on that. Uh, but one of the things that the Lord said to me was, you take care of your body or you will have to leave premature. Amen. You say, well, not me. God knows everything. Listen to me. You can short circuit the plan of God for your life. Amen. Anybody that tells you you can't has not told you the truth. You can short circuit the plan of God for your life. Stop praying. You'll see it. Stop obeying God. You'll see it. Harm yourself. You'll see it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are people, of course, who are exactly the opposite. We stay connected uh, we, because we take our bodies for granted. We're so spiritual-minded, sometimes we forget to, uh, that the Holy Spirit and the power of God lives inside of you. Your spirit and your soul are on the inside, and the Holy Spirit's connected with you. God said, I put all of that power, all of that anointing, all that divine purpose in an earthen vessel, in a clay pot, and you and I have to take care of that body the best way we can. So in the name of Jesus, listen to me. Remember, your body is com you're commanded to serve God with your body. It's like somebody said to me one time, they said, well, you know, I, I worship God, but I'd worship God internally. Well, let's hope they do. And somebody else was just magnifying the Lord. And that other person said, well, all I have to worship him in is this body. So I'm just going to use it to worship the Lord. Uh, 1 Corinthians says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Come on, shout amen. amen. If you're not supposed to be eating chocolate, don't eat chocolate. Uh-oh. I could have went all day without that, couldn't I? Huh? Take care of your body. If you don't take care of your body, you're going to have to leave planet Earth premature. Look at two people and say, I'm in it for the long run. Come on, tell them, I'm in it for the long run. The Bible says that we are to be sanctified, which means set apart for a purpose. Don't abuse your body. Don't misuse your body. Stay pure with your body. Oh, my God, it gets quiet in this church when you tell the truth, doesn't it? Stay pure. Stay upright. Uh, don't take your body and get it out of its natural faculties. Don't mess up your mind with stuff. Don't mess up your lungs with stuff. Don't be breathing in stuff in your lungs that you don't have to breathe in. Amen. My goodness, this is good. When it gets quiet, I think it's getting home. <laughs> Listen to this. It's very important. Here's the, second, here's the next thing. Stay connected to the promises of God. Come on, shout promises. Stay connected to the promises of God. Amen. Listen to, uh, there's a promise for every need that you have. Every need that you have, there's a promise from God that God will supply that need. Uh, listen to what you say. Listen to what you are believing. Amen. Be extremely careful about people who tell you that God doesn't do that today. Uh, because God fulfills His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the same for you and me today, and he will be tomorrow also. The question is not, is he the same? The question is, are we the same? Yeah. 
Are we people of faith? Do you remember when you first got saved? I'm telling you, every promise in the book was yours. Yeah. You wouldn't back off of it. It didn't make any difference. You're confessing the Word of God. You're standing on those promises every time there's a need. you got nine different answers right there in the name of Jesus going. And then time uh, begins to take place, and God has met your needs, and things have just kind of hit another level. And before long, if we're not careful, we disconnect from the promises out of complacency. Uh, never allow that to happen. Keep the fire of God on the inside of you. Pray, read the Bible, uh, magnify the Lord, and confess the Word of God continually. Come on, shout hallelujah. Here's the next one. Check the arena in life that you're running in. I hope this gets in to somebody right now. You know, if I was... If I was training to be a baseball player, playing on a big baseball diamond, and so I decided, okay, I'm prepared, I'm ready to go, but I actually went to a swimming pool and tried to play baseball in a swimming pool. How many of you know it's not going to work very well? Can I get a better amen? Amen. It's the same way. If we say we're Christians and we're training in faith and we're doing all of that, but we want to live like the world instead of as citizens of the household of faith, check the arena that you are living in. Which one are you being attracted to? Ask God to help you. Look, we're not trying to look like the world, act like the world in its fallen state. We are in the world, but we are Christians. I'm not trying to go to a sword fight without a sword. Can I have a big hallelujah? And I'm sure not going to a gunfight with just a knife. No, you, you find that arena that you are, uh, that you work around in life where you are and you make that decision that you're going to serve God by faith and not just by circumstance. When things are going bad, people press into God. When things are going good, they kind of back off. Seen it all my life. Do you remember when you didn't have enough money to pay the light bill? Oh, hallelujah. And then all of a sudden you had more money than enough, and you're like, that may be too much money to give. Oh, I'm not sure who I'm talking to. No, we're people who press in. I said, we press. We press. We press. When things were bad, when there was a bad report from the doctor, oh my God, we're praying, getting everybody to pray with us. We're on every prayer list we can. And then when the need gets met, we're like, well, I'm not sure if I'm going to church today or tonight or not. You know, I got to have family time. What happened to Saturday? What happened to Friday night? What happened to Thursday night? What happened to Tuesday night? What happened to Monday? I'm just asking a question. No, we're people who press. We're people who press. I'm trying to show you in the scripture how you can get that answer from God when it looks like denial all around. You're going to be the one getting the answer. They just continue to press. Listen to this. Check the confession. I'm going to call it your confession connection. What are you confessing with your mouth? Are you confessing the problem all the time? Are you confessing that God supplies that need? that with his stripes you were healed? Are you confessing that you have the mind of Christ? Are you confessing that fear does not dominate you, but peace and joy and love and unity, that's what you're going to press toward? What are you confessing according to the Word of God? Hallelujah. I know this world has its problems, but we don't go around confessing the problems of the world. We're not ignorant of the world. We know those things. But I'm also not a citizen of this world. The Bible says you and I are ambassadors. We're from another country called heaven. Hallelujah. So it's very important that we talk like we're citizens of the country we came from. Last night, Cindy and I had gone to a restaurant, and we were, and this gentleman came up, and he starts talking to us, and he sounded Italian or French. We really weren't sure. So he was a great waiter, so he starts waiting on us. And you know me and curiosity, I said, okay, man, where are you from? Where would you come from? He said, Mexico City. I said, you don't talk like any Mexican I've ever talked to. He said, well, actually, 
I was taught English by someone who spoke French and spoke Italian. So my accent sounds like I'm from Europe. But he said, I grew up in Mexico City. Was born there. I'm like, hallelujah. How many of you know you and I should sound like the kingdom we come from? Come on. Uh, people have no problem. I was out in California this week. I'm out there, check into the hotel. The first thing the lady asked me was, where in the world are you from? I said, I'm from God's country, Texas, of course. She's like, are there any openings there? That's what she said. Are there any openings there? I said, yeah, just 100,000. Here's the next one. Get this real quick. Check up on your fellowship. Amen. Look at those connections. Are you fellowshipping with other people of like precious faith? Are you connected in your church? Do you have fellowship with other men and women in the church? Listen to me. Press for that. Press for that. Meet someone. Talk with someone. Invite someone to go to lunch one day. Amen. Uh, be a friend. Press for fellowship. Can I have a big hallelujah? Hallelujah. There are many things we do in, in, uh, at Abundant Life. It's very important. Be involved with every one of them that you can. I know sometimes there's a few things that people can't be involved with. But listen, press for that. Press for that fellowship. I don't run around with people that don't talk in tongues. I know thousands of people. I speak to people all the time. But I fellowship with tongue talkers. With the Holy Ghost people. I'm preaching a lot better than you're amening right now because there are times when I need someone to get in agreement with me. And you can't get in agreement with somebody who thinks that you have crazy because you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, even though they're nice people. So I want someone who believes in the gifts of the, the now day manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. I want somebody who speaks in other tongues and holds fast the confession of their faith, at least most of the time. Look at two people and say, take notes on that part. Come on, say it. I don't hang around with people that don't tithe. I don't want their curse coming on me. I don't want to get caught up in their curse. I run with people who tithe and who offer. You say, why are you so blessed? Because I run with other people that are blessed. I make that decision. It's very deliberate. Love everybody. I love everybody. But the ones that I hang with are those that are trying to hang like I am. Amen. Pressing toward the mark. Amen. Pressing toward the mark. Pressing toward the mark. Look at two people and say, I'm loving this and I'm glad he's almost finished. Come on, say that. <laughs> I don't hang out with people who say you don't have to go to church. Because I'm not about to deny the Word of God. I mean, it's Sunday morning, you're here and that's a blessing. But listen, it's very important. I don't hang with those people. I work around people. I meet people all the time but I don't hang with them. Amen. I hang with people who love the house of God. We don't have church for people who don't like to go to church. We are Christians. Can I have a big hallelujah? hallelujah? I got tired years ago of trying to have church for people who didn't want to be at church. No, exactly the opposite. We want to magnify the Lord. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah right now. Check your connection. Listen, check your obedience connection. Are you obeying the Word of God? Are you acting on the Word of God? It's a very powerful thing. The last thing I'll say on that, my time's up this morning, check your praise connection. Amen. Do you praise at all times? Do you magnify the Lord at morning and night? Uh, do you continually have a praise in your life, in your mouth? Do your lips praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you'll stay connected like that, listen, let me tell you what's going to happen. Jesus will be saying to you, you've got great faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. Or he said, according to your will. Just let it be unto you. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord right there. To learn more, visit WalterHallam.net. Here you'll find a list of resources to help you with your daily walk in Christ.